Hey everyone! Last time I showed you how to randomize the tree's spawn locations. This time I'm going to go over how to create multiple rolling waves so that you can configure the time between waves and the total amount of waves where the trees will respawn. And then they'll simply pop back in over time just like this. To do this, we are going to save points off and then load those points and just drop them right here into this differences node. Everything's uh, pretty well set up, we don't need to do too much. And the way we'll save them off is by matching these instance static mesh points with the main points and then using the points that are filtered out, the ones that the ISM points are removing and saving those. So let me uh, demo right now what those points look like. There we go. So we've got the points. Here's one thing we'll need to fix. The bounds are too small. The bounds on the main points are full-sized, but the bounds on these points are negative one, and that's because we did this bounds modifier right here to get the ISM points matching up to the main points. But we need to undo that, and there's an easy way to accomplish that. I'm just going to use the transfer attribute node. The target will be main points, and the source will be this distance node. And I'm just going to transfer density from this distance node to density on the main points. And if I look at that now, there we go, we've got the bounds, and hook it up to the point filter, and let's see if it works on the fly. Nope, I'll have to redo this, try this again, refresh, and there we go. Now we've got the proper bounds on these points so we'll be able to save them off. Let's do a little organization, and there we go. All right, so I need to create a save PCG blueprint right here, and I'll create a load one that then fuels the differences right here. Stop. And for saving the main points, I'll need an array of point data. So let me create that. I'll call it wave point data, and I'll make it a array by right clicking on it. And now we'll have to initialize it in the construction script just like we were doing for all the other point data. But we can't simply hook this up to the set value. So first we need to know how many waves will have. Wave count, integer, I'll make it public, and I'll set the default value to th three. Now that we have wave count, we can run a for loop and hook the construct PCG point data up to the for loop. So this for loop's gonna run once per time that we want to have wave point arrays, which means that I want the last index to be the wave count and the first index should be one, because if there are three, we want the loop to run one, two, and then three. That'll generate three sets in the array and that's exactly what we want. Next, we need to add to this array the value that we've just constructed, and there we go. That should initialize the array for us. Compile and save that. Now we need a set wave points and get wave points function. And I'll create these before I do the PCG blueprints just to mix things up. All right, get wave points. I'll remove the main point data here, and wave point data. I want to pass it in, but I can't, so let's modify the return node and 
I didn't realize you could drag it on like that. Well, great, I'll just remove point data here. No, let's just call it point data still. Okay, great. So now we have get wave points returning the wave point data. Let's add a set main points. And actually, I'll just copy set main points right here. Let's add a set wave points. And just like set main points, we'll have to construct the PCG point data every time. I can set array element to this constructed value, but I need to know what the array element is. And that means I need a new integer to track what current wave we are on. So I'll add a new one, current wave. And let's just hook that on up. And now we can replace the main point data as well. We'll get wave point data, drop that in, get a copy, and the copy we're getting is current wave. And hook that on up here. And I'll also hook it up to the initialize from data. Before I forget, let's uh, update the current wave every time. So when we respawn the trees, we can update the wave that we are on, and then it will just roll through each wave, and when it gets back to the start, we'll replace the current wave with the new points right here. So in respawn trees, I could add this before or after generate. I'm going to add it before because I hesitate to add things after, because there's no guarantee that the PCG refresh is going to complete before the next pin in the execute path fires off. Whereas before, we do know that it's going to complete and then we generate. So current wave, I'll just add one to it. And then I will, I want this to go between 0 to 2 in this case, because I have three wave count and the indexes for my wave point data will be 0, 1, and 2. So I can add a wrap function here. The minimum value will be 0. The index 0, the max, will be wave count. And next I will just set current wave to this value. Hook that on up. And I can tell you right now, this isn't going to work the way I want it to work. I will load into the game and show you why. Print string, hook up this current wave to the print string, and compile, save. Now, if I jump, it'll update the current wave and print out the wave that it's on. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I need this value to be zero, one, two. So I could subtract one from this entire result. But if you think about how this is working, I've set this to go between 0 and 3, and it is skipping the 0 and going 1, 2, 3. Well, what happens if I reverse the order? Subtract 1 from it, hook it on up. Is it going to skip the 3 and go 2, 1, 0, or will it skip the 0 again? Let's find out. I'll save, right click play, 2102102102. Perfect. So those are the indexes we need. We'll just go in reverse order and it will just work without any additional modification to the data. All right, so we have our current wave. We have the functions to get and set the wave points. We need to create the PCG blueprints. So let's do set wave points, wave points, pop that open, and modify the execute function. I'll just delete set main points here and call set wave points, and hook up this get to it, and just hook it up to the return node. Compile, save, and we have our set wave points. Let's also grab get main points and duplicate that and turn it into get wave points. 
open that up, and in the execute we will call get wave points. And here we have the same problem. We can't just hook up the point data to the in data because the point data is an array. So instead, I'll just trigger a for each loop, and each index of the array I'm going to just add to the collection. And then once it's completed, we will return the collection that we've created. So this is going to output multiple point sets. All right, let's drop these in. Get wave points and set wave points. So set wave points, I'll just replace this transform points. And get wave points, you know how I just said there are going to be multiple sets output? Well, there's only one set selected right here, so let's modify that back into the PCG blueprint, class defaults. I'll check allow multiple data, compile, save, and there we go. Now we're outputting multiple points. So this I can just plug right into the differences. So what's going to happen is the data runs, we save off to the main points, the main point runs, forks off to set the wave points with any that are removed by the ISM points, but the ones that are removed this refresh still get removed from the feeder data by the main points. And then the next few refreshes, this data is still getting removed from the feeder data by the get wave points. And then eventually we will clear out the data and everything will restart again. Now, before I finish up here, let's add a safety to things. So one thing that's happening is get wave points can load the same index that we're setting with set wave points. And I don't want to rely on it happening in any certain order. So instead of relying on it happening in a certain order, I'll just not load the points we're currently setting because we don't need them. We're already removing those points from the feeder data. So let me just um, pop open get wave points. And if the array index is equal to the current wave, we'll just ignore that output. So I'll do the opposite. If it's not equal to the current wave, we'll use the output. So branch and hook that on up. And now we need to get the current wave. So let me go back into tree spawner and into get wave points. I'm just going to add another output. Index type integer and I'll hook up current wave there. Compile save and now back under get wave points. I've got the current wave the index. Actually, let's rename this to uh, current wave instead of index, just to be clear. Current wave. There we go. Compile and save again and back under get wave points, current wave. So if the current wave doesn't equal the for each loop index, send it through. If it does, just drop it off. And so now we've added a tiny bit of protection to this loop such that we're not going to be worrying about writing to the data at the same time as reading or anything like that. All right, let's uh, try this out. Right click play, remove a few points. One, two, oh, it came back already. That's weird. Let's uh, debug these get wave points and see if we can find out what's happening. Interesting. They are spawning their boxes properly, but the boxes aren't doing anything, and that's because they are density zero. So they're not actually able to remove points. I also just received this error. Accessed none trying to read property point data. Set wave points. Let's find out this error first. So set wave points returned none. I'll toggle a breakpoint here and try playing. And if we look at the data coming in from set wave points, it's unknown. So it hasn't been 
initialized yet. And that is under set waypoints. So if we look at tree spawner, I think I can figure out what happened. The very first run of this, get main points, has no points. So we're sending it through all of this, there's still no points. We filter it out, we hit set waypoints, there are no points. And then in set waypoints, there's no data in this collection to get, so index zero doesn't exist, so we send in a null object into the point data. So a way to fix that is to go back to tree spawner and on the construction script, where we're setting this main point data here, we can call set points, and on the in points, I'm just going to make an array and leave it blank. Compile, save, right click play, and there we go. It's happy. And we can also see right here, there's point data. There's nothing in the point data, but there's point data. Toggle breakpoint and stop. Okay, so now let's figure out the density problem. So when the ISM points match with the main points here, the density is zero. When they don't match, it's one. And then we override the density from the main points with this zero or one value. Well, we can um, change that by, instead of overriding density, we'll just create a new attribute, filter. And then we will filter on this new filter attribute. Save that. Looks like the static mesh spawner will throw an error the first refresh that mesh is not in the metadata. That's all right. All right, so let's see what we've got here. I think debug might still be on. Remove a few trees, jump. Remove a few more trees. Looks like debug might not be on. Jump. Remove a few more, jump. And remove a few more. Jump, jump jump, jump. All right, we've got our wave-based respawning in. That's it for this time. Next time I'll show you how to scale it up.